Hey gang, welcome, welcome, welcome to The Big Picture with Jefferson and Ari, Roger Scott. Mm -hmm. This is where Jeff and I uh, really get a chance to talk. This is really the only chance that we really do get a chance to talk. And I look forward to it because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. This is an interesting wow. time to get together and talk. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm all right, Roger. I mean, it's been a crazy time. I'm trying to make heads or tails of what's going on out there. It's not so simple, but uh, it's never boring. It's been an, it's been an exciting summer. It, is, it has been a very, very exciting summer, actually. A little too exciting, if you ask me, especially for August, you know? We're like, we're like this morning on my video, I said, I said April 16th, and I said, wait a minute, it's August 16th, you know? It's, this is theoretically, yeah, yeah. you know, in theory, in theory, hypothetically, this is supposed to be like the quietest, like, week or, you know, historically, like, historically. Yeah, there's historically. a historical precedent for it, but it doesn't matter. Like, everything's out the window in this new reality that we live in. Yeah, everybody's redefining the norms. Uh, thing. I mean, it's it's crazy. So a few things, a few things that I want to bring up to your attention, and then I want to I want to get your take, and then you know you do the same to me. Sure. My my five cents is this. You know, I'm I'm seeing this morning, low uh, not lows. A uh, Walmart and Home Depot had earnings. Numbers came out pretty good. At the same time, at the same time, the housing numbers. Uh, we had we had uh, the housing starts, the 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 permits the permits looked really really solid. Real, I mean, you know, not super solid, but they look good. But the but the the starts themselves looked a little squirrely. So so there's a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of um, sentiment changes. The CPI. What do you make of it? How are you how are you navigating right now? I, you know, the housing starts, I think, is a bigger number because building permits takes into account commercial activity. So housing starts is more residential, retail-focused number. And that was terrible. That was down 9%. I read a statistic this morning that you'll find interesting, I think, uh, on Redfin, which is a real estate website, that said 16% of all contracts were walked away from in July. So people had contracts for new houses, and they just they said, you can have my deposit. I don't care. I'm not going to go through building Ser this house. Seriously, really? Sixteen percent. Sixteen percent, which I is a massive number. I find That's that. I, I find that. I mean, I'm, not only do I find it very interesting, I find it very shocking. Uh, well, I mean, if you think about interest rates, how high they went, and how how absurd mortgage, you know, like financing a house would be, and then the economy took a it took a haircut, and so if you're making less money, and then all of a sudden you're on the hook to pay this massive balloon mortgage. Maybe you're like, you know what? You can have my 50 Gs. It was a bad mistake on my part to put this deposit down, but I, I can't I can't have a $10,000 a month mortgage at this point, the visibility of my business, whatever. So either way, it's it doesn't it doesn't portend to good things in the economy, in my opinion. No, no, no. And, and Walmart and was awesome, but Walmart guided down <laughs> a month ago and they hit they hit their the, their original number. Yeah, yeah. That, so that and that's what I and that's what I mean. It's like it's like it's like there's no, you know, you and I. Some, well, I don't want to speak for you, but one of the things that I look for, and I'll I'll go I'll get get back into this in a second. One of the things you and I look for, at, at least I do all the time, is trends, some consistency. And yeah, I feel like I feel like there's a a a, 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 a like a, a, a lettuce salad and a. And a and a fruit salad, and they're just putting them together and just mixing them up. And it's like, we're, I mean, we're like all over the place, you know? The best this, of times, it was the worst of times. It's hard to tell. That's the tales of two cities. Very true. Very, very true. That's yeah. uh, the, the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. So this is the housing market index, and it's now at 49. And this is, this is, this is from yesterday. And this preceded that nasty report that Jamie Dimon from, from, uh, from we all know where yeah from from morgan from Ch excuse me from chase and and i don't know it's it's why why are the numbers why are the numbers exceeding expectations at, at the discount stores and at the same time it's like i don't know where to look on one hand on one hand you have you have you have some stability some degree of stability in because the cpi appears to be peak have peaked out and ppi but at the other end of the tail, you've got guys like Diamond saying, you know, now it's a hurricane before it was a storm. Now it's a hurricane. 
So what are you looking at in terms of in terms of numbers specifically? So the market, so in general, like the stock market always like let's let's just like get this out in the open, right? So the stock yeah. market has always been leading by at least six months to the real economy. If you think about what's happened in the last six months, we've done like a 180 in the last month, but after a very bearish move for the first part of the year, the first half of the year. And so the economy is just catching up to the first bearish move and the, and the stock market starting to recover while the economy is actually just starting to get a little bit weaker in certain pockets. And so, but the, the odd part about it is it's all happening in such hyper real time that the stock market effect of going up as it did so so violently and 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 you know defiantly and convincingly has made people feel a little bit better i think on the whole that with gas coming down like i i can't tell you i mean one of one of the uh you know i am obviously a quantitative analyst like you and i look at like data series nonstop and i nerd out on statistics but i also use a qualitative examination and that's society and that's my friends and i can't tell you the amount of people that i've talked to in the past two weeks that have been like coast is clear we dodged a bullet let's go time to let's let's set up a big trip let's go have a big dinner so all of a sudden like you get a 25 30 percent recovery in like some of the beat down stocks you get a 10 percent recovery in the broader market uh gasoline comes down 20 percent, and people are like you know, right beneath the surface is that good feeling, that greedy feeling again, which is precisely why the, the Fed knows this, precisely why they can't stop, precisely why they're going to continue in September to tighten by $95 billion. That's something that's still going to happen in September, whether no we like what. it or not. They're yeah. going to extract liquidity out of the market next month at $95 billion. That's an unprecedented amount of tightening uh, that's going to happen in September in, in global markets. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. Um, so so do you and I know it's a fluid situation and we have to take it, I guess, every month at a time. And I completely agree with you with how the U.S. economy is completely lagging to the stock market. The stock market's looking ahead. The, 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 you know what we're getting from the And and remember, it hasn't even been revised yet. It takes it takes a month just to revise that stuff. So it right. is very it, it, it is very, very lagging. Do you, now I'll tell you an interesting thing that I uh, that I learned the other day, and also an interesting statistic. You know, I've been traveling this summer a lot more. I've been getting out, uh, as you know, I've, I've been to New York recently. It seems to me like yeah. things are are really rocking and rolling, and things are picking up. We're getting headlines that people are are starting to travel more and more. But you know, here's the interesting thing. I read the other day, and I don't remember. I I can't quote where, but I I learned that only twenty to twenty five percent of um of pre-covid activity has picked up again we're still we still have about 75 to 70 percent to go before we're fully there in terms so, of in terms of of travel or uh, yeah in terms of travel and and yeah in terms of travel uh, it, not for business purposes but like like people entertainment booking trips booking vacations uh expedia type of uh, uh, stuff holidays that kind of that kind of travel um going going to yeah, I, I thought, thought so. that hotels were back to pre-pandemic levels, That's, but I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe business-wise, I, I, I don't know. But, 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 um, and I'll, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to find that source. But, but I read it and I was like, really, this is very interesting because if you were to ask me, I would say we're about seventy-five percent there, uh, maybe eighty percent there, just based on my experience. You know, I live in Florida. I go around. I travel. I went to New York. I went to D.C. Things were, you know. But again, that's what the numbers are. And again, maybe those numbers are a little bit lagging because there's been a big change in the last month or two. I'll look into that. But do you think this is it for energies? Do you think that, that we've peaked out on oil or do you think there is more upside? I think there's more upside. I think that like the whole rush, uh, I think <laughs> this is the thing. We're on the precipice of an energy heat, like, the, you know, the biggest strain on the energy complex is winter. And when, when the, when the, contrary to like everything you see in the media that we're, that it's going to be hot forever and there's no winter, there's still going to be a winter and it's going to be freezing as shit in places like Germany. And they're going to, they're, have you seen natural gas prices? In I Europe? have, they're I have. Exploding. It's going so, crazy. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, the market is ignoring this 800 pound gorilla 
energy prices are a little bit under control because I feel like there's like a lot of pressure on them to be a lot of, a lot of people, it, it behooves a lot of people to keep them down, but they're trying to, it's basically like they're trying to, you know, hold back a dam, a flood that's coming no matter what. And uh, if you have the economy, you can't have it both ways. If you have the economy stay pretty strong and you have this massive disruption, prices have to go higher. They have to, they can't not. So in the short period, so I guess what I'm trying to say to sum it up nicely for everybody is that the pullback in energy is the transitory part. Agreed. Agreed. Not vice versa. This is and, a counter trend. This yeah. is a counter trend yeah. thing happening right now that we're involved See, to in. To me, to me, this looks like a pullback and we're going back up in the energy sector. That's right. And to me, right. to me, this, for example, and I, you could you could pick any of the three indices. I don't care which one you look at, but to me, this looks like this will come back down, at least it back into the congestion area. Yeah, I don't yeah. believe the market. There's a counter trend. It's a counter trend move that's happening yeah. now. And so just like, just when everybody takes their eye off oil, then it's going to sneak and sneak and sneak and sneak. And then you have one of these shock moves again. And the same thing happens with rates too. Because like, like I said, right underneath the surface, you still have this, this, this desire, this lust for greed, for things to, to be more expensive. And that's, that's, that, that is what the Fed is really trying to stamp out of the economy is that frothiness. And if that frothiness is bubbling right underneath the surface, as soon as you get your first little mini pullback in gas and you know, a nice decent couple of weeks in the stock market, then they haven't done their job yet. They haven't done their job yet. I agree that's with you a hundred that people. That's, that's the part that people have to reconcile is that they have to be thorough in stamping that out for at least a little while. So I, I completely agree with you on this. I think you're a hundred percent right on, on what you're saying. And I think if anything, if anything, the, the little, the, the little higher confidence level that we have now, and the fact that there's a possibility yeah. that we have peaked, it's only going to give the fed more strength. The fed's not going to back away and say, things it are gives better. Them more room. Of course. Gives them more room. Yes. Gives them more they're going to say, they're going to say we can, the, the, hey, they're going to say this. What we've been doing is helping, as you guys could see, because things are getting better. Whether it's true or not, we, we'll find out in, a, in three to six months. But they're going to say that, and, I, and it's probably true to some degree. And they're going to yeah, say yeah. we're going to we're going to continue we're going to continue going down this road. I completely agree with you. But but they but don't the have question, a choice. No, no, no. They they're they're choice. they're on a they're on a mission. They're on a mission. They're, this is going to be continuous. Um, but, 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 and I believe this is why I'm only taking short positions in the bond and I'm looking for another pullback, you know, against, you know, with the main trend. And I, I don't know if you've been trading the bond market at all, but, uh, I'm, I, I haven't I, believe it or not. And I used to like the, I used to, I love to trade the TLT and stuff, but I, there's been so much to do in these crazy stocks. So I've been <laughs> focused on that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so I do, I do believe, I do believe we have more downside with the bond market as, as you've, if you said more upside in the energy market, a little bit more bearishness in the stock market. And I think volatility is going to be going higher. Um, yeah. Are you, what's your take on volatility? You think we've bottomed out in the short I'm with term? You. Long VIX at 20, long XLE, very bullish on like, you know, Oxy and Apache and, and all Boy, the- uh, You and I, you and I. Thrillers, the XLP stock. Those stocks look fantastic in terms of basing out and consolidating to go higher, especially with crude oil taking that big hit that it's taken that big yeah, haircut. Yeah, I think yeah, crude yeah. bounces and I think those stocks explode. Uh, and the rest and of you know, stocks. I'm still, I'm opinion. still- with with that said, and and, and, and by the way, I completely one thousand percent agree with everything you've said here. I, I you know, sometimes we don't agree. We, we, no, we sometimes we don't, true. which is good too. But 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 I I couldn't agree with what you're saying. I think you're one hundred percent right on what. But you're think saying. about this, Roger. China yeah. just came out, so we haven't even talked about this. This is incredibly let's, important. Let's get into it. Set the tone for Monday. So China yeah. had their numbers. Yeah. They have them in the middle of the night on Sunday because, of course, Asia is ahead of the West, right, in terms of the new day. And the new week. So they released their retail sales number, which was supposed to be at like five and change, five and a half percent or something came in at like 2%, came at 2%. And so, and another couple of numbers came out in China that were horrifically bad. So they did a panic move and the Chinese central bank cut interest rates. They cut interest rates while the rest of the world is raising interest rates, while the Fed is doing quantitative tightening. The Chinese 
were so shocked by how bad their economy is looking that they cut rates. They cut rates. So what happened? You had a huge sell-off in commodities yesterday. You had a huge sell-off in oil. You had a huge sell-off in copper based on that because of the Chinese growth story. So that might be for oil a little bit of a fly in the ointment of the bulk case, but we still have a supply situation. I'm and more work. bearish on on copper and building, you know, like especially after this construction commodities, you know, this construction number in the U.S. today. Uh, so, so economic commodities like like steel, like like copper, those are more bearish on than oil because of the supply. It's a supply situation more than anything. Yeah, yeah, no question. And by the way, oil has been oil has been and still is leading all of those sectors. For example, if you were to look That's at true. My, yeah, if you if you if you, were, if you look at the sectors, if you look at the sectors right here. Yeah. Got you got uh that's no that's that's not the case. That's can't be. Uh, hold on a second. That can't be here. Let me just go from yesterday's data. Energy yeah. is still number two. Utilities and energies are still, you know. Yeah. You've got the industrial and uh materials all the way down here on a cumulative basis. So well, communication's still bad, huh? The bottom communication's oh. still yeah, communication's still bad. Nothing has changed. It's still it it, it was delete. But it looks like it's – the thing about it is this, Jeff. I think – I think and, – and again, I'm now going to talk a little technical. Uh, not technical, complicated technical analysis. <laughs> the – I believe we're going to – I think I think we're going to – I think the stock market, and I'll just use the SPY. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're highly correlated. But I think what's going to happen is a lot of the – I think a lot of the earnings were a little better than expected because they were just so darn uh, under – they were – under they were just so pressed down over here that right. that, that not because they were good none of them were great but and and if you took energy away they were crap but <laughs> analysts love to under you know they like to over and under they don't they don't like to get right into it because there's more volatility more opportunity and they get paid they don't for. often stick their necks out on the line to say the least no, analysts no, and they're no. lagging and yeah. So, so I think we're going to reverse and come back down, but I think we're going to sustain ourselves. If the numbers continue to show some hope, which is what we're seeing now with the CPI and the PPI, then I think we'll be able to stay around here. And the longer we could stay around here without making a new low, the better things will get. But here's what's really, really making me nervous. I, I want to show you this, and you got to see this. This is, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So check this out. Consumer discretionary, 95% of stocks – above the 50 day moving average, 22% above the 22. So it's like someone's building, someone's building using gold and diamonds to make the roof of the house, but the foundation is sinking. <coughs> yeah, so to, 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 in, in, plain, in plain speak, the longer term trend is still low. Terrible. And the short term trend is up. So it's but look at energy. It's a tough take when it's like that. Energy's energy is consistent. Yeah, it's oh, consistent. You kidding That's me? Better, those are better charts. Those are better charts. Much better. These are this is a beautiful chart. So you got consumer yeah. staples. Anything over fifty here, you know, anything over fifty, sixty, yeah. the higher the better. But look, you got you got consumer staples, energies, and utilities. Every I mean, and a little a little bit yeah. of industrial, but this is a little wonky. You know, that can go either way. But I mean, look at this. Right. I mean, Jeff, I if I show you this, the only time we've been at this at nosebleed levels was the COVID recovery. We've never even but been this, in this. That, that, that's a sign of how oversold that the market is or has been, how, so, how broken these charts are, like the consumer, the consumer discretionary charts, and uh, how violently they've returned higher, right, in a yeah. short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what that is. So they're overbought in yes. the short run on, yes. on, 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 a, uh, yes. on, on their long-term trend. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't yeah. have said it. That's exactly what. Yeah, but China has, right. and you know, when you mentioned China, I think China might have also infused a little, a little uh, cash into their economy. Uh, oh I yeah, think that, yeah, oh, yeah. I think they're goosing that. But, but again, I'm not like. Let's talk like difficult. Let's talk about you know dueling pianos. They also they also delisted all of their state owned companies. So the companies that China owns outright, like China Telecom and you know China Mobile. And Petro China, they took those off the uh, Hong Kong exchange. Those companies are no longer publicly traded companies. So what happens? Let me ask you this. Let me riddle you this, Batman. What happens if Alibaba is taken off the New York Stock Exchange and they're no longer a publicly traded companies? What happens to investors then? How can you have that stock in an IRA for your kids' college fund with that lingering possibility? 
It's not huge, but it, what happens? Nobody knows. It, it's nobody knows. Nobody knows. And 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 again, we're still we're still not a hundred percent done with using their accounting techniques for American companies, which should have been out loud years and years and years ago. Yeah, but there's a yeah, lot of the whole point. That's the whole point is they don't want to play by the rule that by by the international financial community's rules. No, no, oh. and no, no. Um, Jeff, Jeff. So we agree on interest rates. We agree on the basic schematic and the basic formation of the stock market. Any other things yeah. that are that that you're you're focused on that is that are that's going to give you a good reading of of where we're heading instead of where we've been. Just uh, kind of trying to get your your here's while you're doing that. Here is the agenda for the week in case in case uh, you wanted to take a look at that. But my biggest thing this week is going to be the retail sales number. That's massive. Tomorrow's that's the whole week. That's the yeah. biggest thing this week. I, I, I put out a Monday report. Those of you guys that don't get it, go out on joyofthetrade.com, seek it. It's a written report, Roger. And I always put, I always circle one economic number that I think is going to move the needle. And then I say what the market expects, what economists expect, and then I have a way to play it. And then I give like an earnings number. And this week, my economic number was retail sales and my stock that I was looking at was Target. And they both come out tomorrow morning. And they both right. come out tomorrow morning. And I'm bearish on Target because I, be, I believe that they haven't navigated this thing as good as Walmart. And I believe there are two, like, I believe in general that there's a downgrade of retail that's happened, which is why Dollar Tree does better, which is why Walmart's going to do a little bit better and why Target's going to do the worst because Target's a little bit more expensive. So people that used to shop at Target are now shopping at Walmart and Dollar Tree and blah, 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 because of the fact that everything's so damn expensive. They're looking yeah, for I deals. I've been I've been extremely bullish on Dollar Tree and Dollar General for those reasons because yeah. people are are, are yeah. moving. But also, so also, here, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say I was just gonna say that's another reason why I I've been liking Ross stores and because I think on the retail level the same people are going to be going to those like TJ Maxx, Ross stores, uh, Marshalls, you know those type nice. of stores as well. Go ahead, yeah. you were saying something. So retail sales. What do you think about that? What's your, what's your lean? Um, retail sales, I think we're going to be a little bit on the weaker side. I think we're going to see a little more cautiousness because of what happened with the CPI and the, uh, be, excuse me, because of what happened with the previous CPI. I think investors are scoop, uh, spooked. And I think, remember, these numbers are, are older numbers. So I think we're going to have a negative. And there's another big aspect. They're not, they're not inflation adjusted. So if, if inflation has come down and prices have come down, then retail sales will have come down based on just that aspect. Not yep. nothing to even do with yep. the velocity of people buying goods, just on the fact that gas is lower, et cetera, and these things are lower. Retail sales are going to be a little bit weaker for July, the same way CPI was. That will reflect yep. that same weakness. So I'm I'm skewed I'm skewed weak retail sales, but the market doesn't be, like the market doesn't think about it that way. They just take the shock number, because right. when the retail sales number was very strong, and not inflation adjusted because inflation was so high, they were like, oh good, retail strong. <laughs> they're they're trying to works. It, 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 i do and, and it's both really, ways it, it works both ways and it's amazing to me and it's still it's still it still shocks me after all of these years how quickly the sentiment on wall street can change from being extremely bearish to extremely bullish to um so 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 i i do think i think they're going to be a little disappointing but i do i do want people to pay attention to the number minus the x vehicles and gas because that number is going to be very distorting uh, for obvious reasons, because we've had a lot of volatility in the last couple of months. So I'm, I'm looking more at the headline number. And quite honestly, between, between us all here watching this, I, I, I like to look at retail sales on a quarterly basis. I think looking at anything yeah. on a monthly basis, especially Fed data, is very wonky. I mean, the number gets revised. It's subject to changes. I think right it, now, everybody's also, looking at it. Also, it doesn't matter, you know, it, it, I'm sorry, but it no, doesn't matter, it, you know, it, like doesn't like the reality of it isn't digested until a little bit later. The way the market reacts is in complete knee jerk fashion. They take the gun out and they shoot the stocks, or they go nuts and they back the Brinks truck up and they buy everything in sight. And what I'm looking at, which is a little bit precarious, is that the 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 retail sales number, the total number, is month over month is expected to be at one percent, which is precariously close to zero, which is even more precariously close to a negative number. So if we get a negative half a percent, that's just going to be the shock headline. The market is going to take a little while to digest what the hell that even means. But yes. plastered all yes. over the planet is going to be the headline. Retail sales went negative in July. Agreed. Agreed.
And I think that may I think that may also have a little impact to financial companies, bank uh, as banks, because I think yes. banks are right now sit like on a sit and wait. I another re, you know I'm telling Absolutely. you the more the more I look at the market, the more I like the energies, the consumer staples, yeah. and the yeah. uh, and the healthcare, the 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 recessionary proof. I'm still the I'm most still... solid charts, the most solid, the most yeah. solid. Jeff, this you can't was, do anything uh, in the stocks that have run up a lot that were so deeply oversold. No. Other than take some take some exposure off if you're an investor, or you can buy puts if you're a short term trader on. Stock. That's that's what I've been I've been buying. I've been stocks that are up fifty percent in a month and go along them here. You miss that trade. So you yeah, have I've been uh, I've I've been increasingly uh, putting on puts. You know, uh, buying volatility, yeah. putting on puts uh, gradually. Yeah. But I think we're getting we're getting to that level where that rubber band is just a little too over. Well, know. what's awesome for these people that are watching us is we have trading strategies. So we we don't care. We're agnostic. We 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 call this rally. We're calling a pullback. We're gonna call the rally past that. It don't matter. There's action. We're gonna make. We're gonna we're gonna have good ideas to help you guys make money. So pay attention to that. I'm not your financial advisor down the street working at Charles Schwab that's going to tell you to go along the spy and buy the ARK here. Kathy Wood has a great track. I'm not that guy. But I do have trading strategies that go long short, and so does Roger. And guess what? We all of like mo I'd say most of our systems have done incredibly well in 2022, which puts us in a pretty top tier of this entire profession. So thank you for your wisdom, Roger. I'm learning a lot from you. And uh, this discussion is very fruitful. And I hope that those people that watch these things are really getting something out of it and paying close attention. Because if you have been, then you haven't just sat there and like done nothing and then been happy with a little bit of rally. You've rode all these waves up and down. And and and, and folks, if you're and fear and and that re, that brings me to if if you guys benefited, if you guys have had a success, send Jeff an email. He won't bite you. I promise. It's Jeff at joyofthetrade.com support at marketgeeks.com. And again, uh, please, please send us an email. We want to hear from you. We want to know about your experience with WealthPress, good, bad, ugly. Tell us. We learn from we learn from each other and we learn from you. They say a man who stops learning is is that's the end. You got to keep learning, learning, learning. And and the opportunities the market's giving you right now to learn and and the volatility, it's just an amazing time. I think we're all going to be looking back at this time and just shaking our head going like, what the hell happened there? You know? Uh, so it's it unprecedented. It's on, it's, it's never happened. It's, it's a work in progress. All we can do is our best, have our best analysis, have our best game plan, have strategies that we know that'll give us edge and then let the chips fall where they may, because there's so much that's out of our control. I think that that's one thing we've all learned and you just Absolutely. have to learn how to live with that. You Definitely. Live with that. Definitely. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for, for, for spending this half hour with me. I really, really appreciate it. And folks, if you're enjoying these videos, Post comments, feedback, let us know. Support at marketgeeks.com, Jeff at joyofthetrade.com. Jeff, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, and I'll talk to you later. Likewise. Thanks, my friend. Totally enjoyed it. Bye, guys.